Bloom's taxonomy was created by Benjamin Bloom and his colleagues. It is the hierarchical classification system of educational outcomes. This means that you must master one level to move on to the next. For example, as you can see in the picture, you must be able to understand something before you apply it. In other words, learning at higher levels is dependent on having attained prerequisite knowledge and skills at lower levels. The original Bloom's taxonomy was revised in 2001. The levels all changed from noun form to verb form, and creating was moved to the top. The following scenario will demonstrate how teachers collaborate and use Bloom's taxonomy in their classrooms. All right, so last week went great, and so now all we have to do is come up with a lesson plan for the life cycle of a butterfly for this week. How are we going to do that? That sounds really difficult. I know, Bloom's taxonomy. That sounds like a great idea. The first stage to Bloom's taxonomy is remembering. So for this stage, for this lesson, we could help the students remember the cycle of a butterfly. Bingo! Mommy is analyzing. Did we do so like, could we have a picture of different parts of the life cycle and have the students identify which like part of the life cycle they aim? That's about right. That's a good idea. The third stage to Bloom's taxonomy is applying. So like for this stage, could we have the students create a story about a butterfly that's going through its life cycle? No, that's not it. We have different parts of the life cycle on different pieces of paper and then have the students order them so it's in the correct order. Yes, that's it. Great. Why couldn't I think of that? <laughs> So for this stage, could we have like the students compare the life cycle of a moth to the life cycle of a yes. butterfly? Yes. That's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. The fifth stage to Bloom's taxonomy is evaluating. Okay, so maybe we could have a list of questions that the students can answer that would make them like really think about what the content is. So could we ask him something like, why do butterflies lay their eggs on the underside of leaves? Yeah. Oh, that's good. The sixth stage to Bloom's taxonomy is creating. What did you say earlier? <laughs> <laughs> we could have the students create a fictional story based on the life of a butterfly. That would be creating, right? That's thinking. Teachers can use Bloom's taxonomy to assess where students are in their learning to determine if they are ready to advance to the next level. To help teachers with this, there is a list of verbs that align with each level. Bloom's taxonomy can also be used to create assessments, plan lessons, evaluate the complexity of assignments, plan project-based learning, self-assessment, and much more. Teachers use Bloom's taxonomy to create objectives that align with state standards. As you can see from the video, the teachers were creating lesson plans for the state standard of the life cycle of the butterfly. They then created lesson objectives aligning with each level of Bloom's taxonomy. The teachers in this scenario were also demonstrating teacher collaboration because they were working together to reach a common goal. They were each able to provide different perspectives and correct each other's mistakes to create positive learning experiences for their students. Now that we went over Bloom's taxonomy, do you guys remember the stages? I think so. Stage one is remembering. Yeah. And two is understanding. Yes, it is. Three is applying. Yep. And four is evalu evaluating. Yes. No, no, no. Wait. It's analyzing. That's oh, right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> stage five is evaluating. Correct. And then stage six is creating. Yes. Mm -hmm. We got this. Yay. <laughs>